Warning, this video may be too spooky for you. If that is the case, I sincerely apologize. This video was not planned out or scripted in any way. It was mostly just an on-the-spot kind of moment. I heard an idea from a friend Bear. It wasn't really an idea, it was mostly like a Reddit post that someone had made. I thought it was pretty funny, so I decided, you know what? I want to make myself a festive video just for Halloween. And you know what? Might as well, for the occasion, you know? So, I decided to make a sort of a narration point of view of the Guardians going into the raid. So that's what I did. I just I found footage of me playing the raid. I put it up together into like a little kind of slide. Not really a slideshow, but you know, just a I guess a compilation as I voiced over the entire thing. So I voiced over the entire raid and I uh, just pulled everything basically out of my ass. Just saying spooky things, I guess. Not really spooky things, just commentating basically. So, if you guys like the video, I appreciate it. Like, maybe subscribe, and if you guys enjoyed it, you know, thank you. I kind of did some work to this. I wasn't being so lazy. Anyways, guys, <laughs> again, I wanted to elaborate. This really isn't completely my idea. Like, I just heard something. I was like, hey, I want to do something, you know. The whole skit thing was kind of my idea, you know, but anyways, guys, I'll leave it to the video. And always, guys, keep being lazy and happy Halloween. Six guardians have rose to the challenge. They think themselves worthy to challenge. A king, a god, seen like none other. Wretched and evil in every way. They rose to the challenge and went straight to the heart of the darkness, thinking they have a chance to beat it. Minds strong and ready, prepared for the fight to come, they go to the Dreadnought. They fight their way in, mob by mob, undead creature, one by one. Dead versus dead. Undead guardians versus the undead hive. As the court themselves judge them to deem them worthy to enter their domain. Confident in themselves, yes. They slay the beast one by one with ease, with finesse, with perfection. Such skill has never been seen before in this team, this fire team of six, these guardians, they know what they're doing, and they are prepared for what's next. They enter the portal, and they see the home of the dead king. From here, the journey only gets longer. A trail of despair and mistakes that cannot be made. One drop, and surely your light will be lost forever to the darkness. They tread through carefully, cautiously, as the thought of falling runs through their mind. Don't look down, don't look down, don't fall down. As a team, they do this together. Jump by jump, ship by ship, and they make sure to get through this together. For losing a guardian now will be no help to facing a dead king. The long journey is over, but the challenge has just begun. A door tall and wide, black, full of evil. Is it a door in, or is it a door out? A portal for the evil undead to come through. We know one thing, and that is we need the key to open it. We do not belong in this portal. We must vanish this door, and we must proceed on forward. So we stand firm and stand tall, unmoving, undying, making sure that we succeed in finding the key to open the black door. A black door full of vent that should be closed forever, opening a new door of opportunity, a new door for a new challenge. This door will be opened, and I will stand here outside waiting for it to be opened to me as long as it takes all night. Dead King, open your door for me. Let me in. 
for I challenge you. As we all stand tall, taking blow for blow, it ends just as it started. The door opens, but it isn't the dead king who lets us in. No, no, it's not the dead king, but someone just as menacing, just as terrifying. The war priest has welcomed us, has welcomed us to his door. And he, he challenges us, a master of war, indeed, a war priest that is ready to take our souls. We fight, giving blow for blow. This monster is tough, indeed. We must stand tall together and fire at once. We must give him everything we got. We cannot even give him a breath to tack us back. We keep firing and firing, and he just keeps firing back. A light shines bright, brighter than I've ever seen before. For a second, my life flashes before my eyes. This light, so bright, makes me think of heaven. But surely, this is no place like heaven. This is my worst nightmares. Undead creatures rotting to the flesh trying to take my soul this light is a lie and it only wants to eat me i cannot let this light consume me for this is not my light this is the undead light and i cannot let it take me we hide in the shadows the shadow of a majestic pillar to keep ourselves safe hopefully we are safe the soul-eating light starts to dim, and we know we must rid this world of this beast, of false truth, of false light, of false hope. He is darkness, and though his light is bright, it is darker than a black pit. We must destroy him before any others be tricked into thinking that he has the light to save us. He must die, along with all the other undead creatures. As we stand tall together, firing one by one, giving all our light that we can, we overwhelm the warm priest. His light might be bright, but our light is brighter. We have won. The war priest is no longer alive to trick the souls with his false hope, for he is dead for good. As we make our way through the portal, we find ourselves in a dark room. I might not be able to see in front of me, but as I walk on forward, guiding myself along the wall, I can feel what's under me. I can feel the texture of the walls, bones cracking under my feet. This is a maze built from the bodies that the Taken King has taken. Anything that we kill, anything that take and kill, anything, anything kills, he takes. He builds his army from the undead, and he builds his home from the undead. He sleeps on our graves, building his home from our lost. I cannot bear to think of it that these souls that were once alive have been taken for his bidding. Everything here is dead. Even the air feels thin, hard to breathe. The light is fake. The darkness here though is very real and through these dark rooms I fear what lies ahead. We walk and we walk, corner to corner. We get lost for hours and hours, not knowing where to go. We can't see and our breath is growing heavier and heavier. The only true sense we have now is our sense of hearing and smell. And the only thing I smell is rotten corpses and the sound of the undead coming for us. Are we safe here? 
How do we fight back here? What if we get lost forever? What if we can't even make it to the dead king? Is our light lost forever? Or will we make it through the labyrinth? As these thoughts start to wear thin on us, as our bodies start to grow eerie, we find the false light and we make our way to the next door. As we make our way through, we come across a room full of light. This is very unnerving. Most of the dreadnought is very dimly lit, but this room is like they want us to see what's ahead. They want us to see what's gonna come in front of us. We press on forward, taking a few steps when we notice a ball of life. Very unique. We did not know what it is. We did not know what it does, but we know that it has life. We make our way carefully, when suddenly the ball falls from the ceiling and crashes onto the ground. We stand cautiously, standing by, watching, seeing what happens. When it happens, the room fills with a stench unlike any other. Undead corpses, burning flesh. I do not know what it is, but it is unbearable. As we watch, my eyes start to water as something rises from the pit, from this pool of life. It rises, slowly forming. I do not know what this is, but this is nothing like I've ever seen before, grotesque in every way. It's an ogre indeed, but none like I've ever seen before. Not even the likes of Fogoth the Untamed can compare to this creature. He is foul in every way, in his smell, in his looks, in his demeanor. Nothing I've ever seen before. He strikes us, and we can only hide from his untamable rage. We fight, but we cannot do much. This creature isn't like the last. The war priest was strong and smart and tactical, in tuned with the darkness, using it to its benefit. This creature is a child, a newborn. Not knowing of the darkness, he only has his rage, but that's all he needs to destroy us all. We must destroy this creature. We cannot let it grow to become stronger. Even now, Newly born, and he is this powerful, we must destroy him before he destroys us all. We use everything we got on the creature of rage, our bullets, our rockets, our lights, but nothing leaves us scratch. His body is too tough and too rugged. We cannot get through to him, and there's nothing that we have done that has left any sort of damage. We keep fighting, but nothing is working. As we fight the creature, we see more eggs start to form. These eggs that hold nutrients unlike no other. We know why this creature is strong. This creature was fed millions and millions of undead soldiers, of dead people that we have lost. This creature has fed on their light and has only become stronger. We know what we must do. We break the eggs and we bathe ourselves in its nutrients, the very nutrients that run through the veins of this monstrosity. We take it and we make it our own. We can feel our light rising. We can feel the lost in this nutrients. Everything the Taken has killed. Everything that we have lost. This creature has used its nutrients to live. No longer will he feed on the souls of our lost. If he wishes to consume, then he will have to consume us first. We fight with our enhanced light, growing stronger than ever before, and we attack with everything we've got. Every bullet, every rocket, 
every single inch of light we have left in our body and we fight this creature. This creature might be new to this world, but he will not know what life is. We will send him back to oblivion before he gets the chance to experience it. This creature does not deserve to live, so we will send it back to hell. With one final strike, the creature opens his belly and we fire everything we got. And the creature falls. We have one. The creature takes his final breath and we leave. We can no longer stand the stench of the creature. As it fills the room, its dead corpse rots even more than it did before. We must leave, no time to celebrate. I cannot stand to breathe another second of this foul creature. And we move forward. This journey continues and we walk along the path of these creatures, these war priest of these unsightly creatures of the dead. The path was long, but we have finally made it. The throne room of Oryx, and to greet us, his daughters, slumbering on their pedestals. There is only one thing for us to do, so we make our way to these slumbering undead sisters, guarded by our undead foe, we kill them all one by one, for they know what we will do. We uncover the sisters and kill them in their sleep, not giving them the light of day. The sisters are dead, and Oryx has no more children. Surely, he is mad. The cries of the sisters echo through the night, and Oryx can hear them all. As he rises from the darkness, we stand in front of the Taken King. We do not know what we've got ourselves into. Oryx stands tall and stronger than ever before. We are fighting a god as he sends everything he has for us. His Taken, his knights, his meteors, his ogres, everything he has, he flings our way. We fight, we fight, and we fight some more, and it is wearing us thin. Slowly, we start to dwindle. Slowly, we get weaker and weaker. Slowly, we are losing. We must press forward. As we fight, we know we will not be able to kill Oryx. Our light is not strong enough. It's not destructive enough to destroy this creature. So there's only one thing to do. We will use our light to live, and use his darkness to destroy. We gather as much darkness as we can from our dead foes. We gather the evil that Tolan once sought out, this darkness, and we use it against this Taken King, the destructive force, powerful indeed. These ogres have so much darkness inside them, light eaters eating away the souls of many. We destroy them and we take their darkness, take back the lives that we lost from these creatures. And we use our light and we use his darkness and we will hurt this creature one by one. We each send a devastating blow to this creature's belly, making them flinch, making them pay, making them wish he never fought the light again. But as the fight goes on, we lose a friend as an ogre rips the soul out of our friend. We watch in devastation as one of our comrades falls. We can't stop now, so we destroy the creature and make him pay for stealing our friend's light by taking his darkness. This has gone far enough. We have lost too many and we cannot take it anymore. Oryx laughs as he raises his fist to slam, but we laugh harder as we send his darkness straight to the belly of the beast. He flinches and he falls. 
We have dealt a devastating blow and Oryx is hurt. He is on his final breath, readying for his last attack. We all band together and join our lights. We give him everything we got, every bullet, every rocket, every single inch of life left in our bodies to send Oryx's soul screaming back to hell. And before he could slam his fist, we pierce his dark, wretched soul, his dark, wretched heart with our light, and we destroy the creature. Oryx, the undead king, is dead once again. Silently, we stand in amazement. We've done it. We've killed the beast, we've killed the king, we've killed the wretched god that once made us fear the darkness. We have won today. We stand there quietly, together, grieving for our lost one. When in the distance, we hear. This must be dismantled or dead. Ha 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 